Welcome to the Fight Savage YouTube channel. We are here at Team BSS in Youngstown, Ohio today with the human forklift, Sean Shoemaker. Sean has deadlifted 850 at the Arnold last year and almost did 800 at our place for two, but he chickened out at the last minute. Sean Shoemaker, what are we gonna do today? Uh, we're gonna start with some deadlifts after you guys are all warmed up. Um, then after that, we're gonna do some accessory work and stuff that I do after my deadlifts. All right, and after today, I will be back over 700 pounds again in the deadlift. Sean has guaranteed it. So we start off, um, I like to start off at sets of eight, uh, six to eight, because it gets you warm, and I don't do like an extensive warm up. Mm -hmm. So my warm up is kind of like lacrosse ball my hamstrings, and then I'll go in and I'll do some light sets of six to eight, warming up with the movement, and then it'll let me know if I have any tweaks that I need to address on the way to the weight that I need to work with. And then as the weight gets heavier, I don't like to feel like I'm coming close to a max. So that's when I'll gauge how I back off my rep range as I work my weight up to my working weight. So say I want to do heavy triples today. I want my warm ups to start off at like 40% effort or so, and then work up to maybe 50% effort. And then I'll start cutting my reps down to maybe Four, four reps, or sometimes I'll start working in the triples until I find a triple that I can work my working sets with. Go ahead down to the bar. Great. Great. Now bring your head up and look forward and push it back a little bit. You should be able to feel this all tight. Oh! See? That's what we needed. Yeah, I feel that. You feel it? I can barely bring my head up like that. I know. But you're like it's super tight. tight. Back, it tightens your yeah. rectors and you'll, it keeps your back. Yes. So, up, keep this super tight. Put your back a little bit. It's like when those Amish guys drove up, I had like five apples still in the head in the back of his, his uh, minivan. In position. Yep. Head up the back. I like to do double overhand. Um, I tore my right bicep. Cleaning an axle for axle clean and press, but we've concluded that, I mean, that's all we can It's calm up when I deadlift. And it just took the abuse from the deadlift over the years, and then the axle finished it off. And I've been a lot tighter since that, so I decided to switch to hook grip. So when I compete, and if I'm not allowed to wear straps, I'll do hook grip. And my grip's efficient. Like, um, I pulled 850 hook grip, so I don't do a whole lot of grip work, but hook grip has worked for me. Um, so I'll wear straps when I train because doing reps with strap without straps and hook grip just eat your thumbs. So. Now, how often do you use the when you're training? Um, ever since I blew out my third slip disc, yeah, I use it always. Okay. Yeah, I used to only train on the stiff bar, but then. I got the deadlift bar because I came back to the and it, it just has a different feel. Yeah, it sure does. So when you go to pool with all your body on stage, it kind of catches you off guard. So I was doing that, and then I went back to the stiff bar one day, and I went to yank like I do with the deadlift bar. Well, instead of it bending, all the weight came off the ground. Right. And just popped that disc right out. I wasn't ready for it. <laughs> so at the top of your last one, Try to just let everything drop forward. Okay. Just the last one. Just the last round. Yeah, okay. At the very top.
Oh yeah. 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 Are you trying to feel that on every rep? You want to feel that on every rep. Right. But how I learned to do it was doing it with the last rep. Hold it for a few seconds and then I would start doing it on the last rep and then I would start working it into the now, What's your thing? I mean, are you are you trying to feel that right off the ground so you've got that big stretch? Yes, you get the stretch, but you keep your head up so you don't knock forward. Okay. So you're not right. You're, you're doing this instead. Because like when I stand, my hands are dirty. And like if I have a huge bar, it's like up here. Right. But you'll see as the weight gets heavier, right. you know, the bar locks out lower and lower and closer to my but the shoulders. Are, because I let my shoulders fall forward, right. it just kind of hangs through your traps. Okay. I like my hands as close as I can get them without them getting in the way because it, it puts you closer to the center of the bar and the closer you are to the center of the bar, the more bend you get out of the bar. So, yeah, you see a lot of guys with their hands out wide and for one, wide brings yep. you closer How's to the ground uh, and wide also really gives you less bend in the bar. So, the closer, more bend, the weight comes off the ground later in the pool than it does wide and closer to the So lats, I like to relax my lats. Um, I'm not saying that contracting your lats is wrong, but for me and a lot of people I've worked with, we found that letting your lats stay relaxed, keeping your head pushed back, contracting your spinal erectors through the back of your head all the way down your neck into your back, and letting your shoulders, arms hang off of your traps has given people a better deadlift. I mean, we saw that today with Mark. He hit a PR, and I'd like to say that had something to do with it. But Mark's biggest problem was he was looking down. Um, there are a lot of people who do tell others to look down because it engages more glutes. But Mark has very strong glutes. He's, I mean, he's got a pretty good squat. He's an explosive athlete. He uses his glutes. So when we switched to have him look up, it engaged his, which is already strong, upper back, and it gave him more muscles to pull the bar. So I don't think he has any weaknesses per se, but in his technique, that was definitely a strength that he was able to add in. Come on. Steven, he's got a really good setup. Um, his, a tough part with him is his limb length. Like he starts really low, close to the bar automatically. So he's got to get into a more of a squat position. So it's going to be more keeping everything tight when he pulls so he can get from the bottom of that squat position up into the stand. And then he seems to be pretty strong throughout the midpoint of his walkout is also another tough point. And I think that's just explosive good work. Letting his shoulders drop so he can just pull through. So afterwards, um, we brought out the PR platform. Um, and what we do is we hook bands to it. And I like to use those just to help strength out my lockout. So I don't do it as speed work, but I'll do it to gradually increase the weight as I'm pulling and locking out the bar, which has gotten me to the point where if I can get it off the floor, I'm going to lock it out, which is huge for confidence because if you're in a competition, you're going for a max weight, you feel the weight come off the ground, you know it's done. Like you've, you've already made the lift and you haven't even really started it other than picked it off the floor. So. I'm feeling it, so I always go back to how I feel, but if I'm feeling it and I'm not too beat up, I'll do some kind of like farmer carries or frame carries, which help strengthen my core up um, and keep me, you know, it, I mean, and there's a little bit more deadlifting involved in picking up the frame or the, the, the farmer handle and then just the core stability. And then I'll either finish it off with that or sometimes I'll replace that with good mornings or I'll replace the mid morning with 45 degree back extensions. So it all depends on how the deadlift training went. So if I'm totally fried, then I'll just do the 45 degree back extensions to get some blood flow. And if I'm still feeling pretty good, it'll be frame carries.